Hi guys, it's Marty here from letsbuildwp.com and today I'm going to show you how to get started with WordPress in only 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to cover everything from registering a domain name and hosting for our site to installing WordPress and adding pages. I'll also cover how to change our WordPress theme as well as a few other bits and pieces I think you'll benefit from, including how to get your first month web hosting for only one penny. This video will cover everything you need to know in order to get started with WordPress and by the time we've finished this short tutorial video, you'll be able to build amazing, professional looking WordPress websites like these. WordPress is used by some big brand names such as the New York Times, CNN and Forbes. We also have eBay and Sony. Jay-Z and Katy Perry, just to name a few. So if you're ready, let's start building your WordPress website together. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in order to get started with WordPress is register web hosting and a domain name for our website. For this, we're going to be using a company called HostGator. I've been using HostGator as my go-to hosting company for over 5 years now and haven't had any problems at all. Plus they were nice enough to give me a coupon code which will get you your first month web hosting with them for only one penny. So to get started we just need to head over to www.hostgator.com or alternatively you can just click the link below this video. Either way, once you get here, we just want to click in the top left where it says Web Hosting and that's going to show us the three different hosting plans that HostGator have to offer. To be totally honest with you, the business plan comes with a whole load of added extras you probably won't require when just getting started, so that really just leaves it between the Hatchling plan and the Baby plan. Now the only real difference between these two plans is that the Hatchling plan allows us one single domain which is one website, and the baby plan allows us unlimited domains, which is literally as many websites as you'd like. So if you're only going to be building one website, I'd go for the Hatchling plan, and if you're going to be building more than one website, go for the baby plan. As I'm just doing this for the tutorial, I'm going to go for the Hatchling plan, and once you've decided on which plan you're going to go for, just click underneath where it says Sign Up Now. That's going to bring us to this page and this is where we're going to register our new domain name for our website. So all we need to do is enter what we want for our domain name into this box. So for me it's going to be learning WP for free. So learning WP for free. Then on the right hand side using this drop down we can choose the domain extension we'd like for our website. By domain extension I mean whether you want it to end in .com or .net or maybe you want something like .info or any of these other ones. For me, I just want the .com, so I'm going to click on that. Hopefully, once you type in your domain name and select your domain extension, it's going to say Added Primary. That means this domain name is available and you can carry on with the tutorial. If it comes up and says your domain name is not available, you will need to choose something else because someone's already using that one. Once we've chosen our domain name and we know that it's available, underneath you also have the option to purchase extra domain extensions as well, but for me I just want the .com. Then underneath you'll see it says Domain Privacy Protection and this is totally optional. I normally just uncheck this box myself, but if you want the Domain Privacy Protection just check the box and it's going to be added to your bill. Then underneath where it says Choose a Hosting Plan, here we just want to double check our package type is correct, so for me I choose the Hatchling plan, so this is fine, and then underneath we can choose how often we'd like to pay for our hosting. We can choose to pay for it every month, every six months, or we can even purchase three years up front. We do save a bit more money the longer we buy at one time, so that might be something to think about, but as I'm just doing this for the tutorial, I'm going to set mine to monthly. Then underneath we just want to choose a username and security pin for use with the HostGator's site. And then underneath where it says enter your billing info, we just need to enter our general billing information. This is things like our email address, our name and things like that. 
On the right hand side we can choose how we'd like to pay for our order and we can choose credit card or PayPal. Then underneath we'll see here it says add additional services and these are totally optional. I normally just uncheck all of these boxes but you can have a read through them and see if any of them suit you. Then underneath you'll see here it says enter a coupon code and you might see there's already a coupon entered in here worth 20 or 30% off. But as I told you at the start of this tutorial, I'm going to share a coupon code with you to get your first month hosting for only one penny. So here, if there's already a coupon entered in, you just want to delete it and instead enter learn WP and then the number one. So that's all one word, learn WP one. Then when we click validate, if we scroll down, you'll see that we're now getting our first month hosting for only one penny. We also have access to HostGator's phone, live chat and email support for free and also a 45 day money back guarantee. Then once we're happy with everything, we just need to check this box where it says I've read and agree to the terms of service and click check out now. So I'm just going to pause this video quickly while I fill out my personal information above. Then I'll restart the video after I click check out now. So if you're following along at home, if you just want to pause this video while you fill out your information and then restart the video after you click check out now. Okay, so that's me now back and I finished paying for my order. When I was finished it brought me to a page saying thank you for your order and then redirected me to the home page. Once you've finished paying for your order, you can actually just close HostGator and you now want to open up your email inbox where you should find two new emails from HostGator. Sometimes these can take a couple of minutes to arrive, so don't worry if they're not there right away. Just wait a few minutes and then refresh your inbox. These are pretty important emails, so you just want to keep them safe. But for now, we just want to click into the email that says your account info. Here we're going to find a link to our control panel our username and our password. So for now all we need to do is click the link beside where it says your control panel and that's going to open up this cPanel login screen in a new window. Now we just want to copy and paste our username and password from the email into the cPanel login screen. Once we do that, we can just click login and this is us going to be logging into what's known as the HostGator control panel. Now to install WordPress, we just need to click here where it says WordPress installer. Then using this drop down, we just want to choose our domain name and then leave this box to the right left blank. Once we do that, we can just click next and here we're going to enter some information for our site. So where it says blog title, this is just the title of our website or blog. Then admin user, this is just the username we're going to use for logging into our WordPress website. Then we just need to enter our first name and our last name. Then the email address that we'd like associated with our new website. Then once we're finished, underneath we just want to check the box beside where it says we accept the terms of service and make sure the other box is left checked as well. Once we've done that, we can just click install now on the right hand side and WordPress is going to be installed within a couple of seconds. Once WordPress has been installed, we're going to see our domain name, our username, and we're going to have a randomly generated password. This information will also be sent to us as an email, so don't worry if you lose access to this screen. But for now, we just want to right click our domain name and click open link in a new tab. Or alternatively, you can just open a new tab and type in your domain name manually. Either way, once we do that, it's going to bring us to this page and we just want to click here where it says admin login. Then we just want to type in our username and we can copy and paste our password from this screen or else from the email. We just want to paste it in here and click login. This is us now going to be logging into WordPress for the first time. When we log into WordPress, we're going to be brought to what's known as the dashboard. And this is where we can add any pages or make any changes to our new WordPress website. This screen here is kind of like an advert. And if we just click, I don't need help, it'll disappear. We can also just close this ad at the top as well. 
And if you see this message at the top saying your site's currently displaying a coming soon page, just click the link at the end to remove it. The first thing I like to do after installing WordPress is change my password because it's very unlikely that I'm going to remember this one. So to change our password on WordPress, on the left hand side we just need to click where it says Users, then hover over our username and click Edit. Then if we just scroll down, we'll see here it says New Password and there's this button that says Generate Password. When we click this button it's going to generate us a new random password but we can just change the text that's in this box to whatever we want. If your password isn't strong enough you'll need to check this box to confirm use of a weak password and when you're finished click update profile. So now in future when you go to log in that's going to be your new password. Now that we've changed our password we can take a look at what our WordPress website looks like by default. So to get from our dashboard to our website, all we need to do is click our site title at the top. So this is what WordPress looks like when we first install it, and this is the default theme. We're going to be changing our theme soon, but before we do that, let's add a new page to our website. To add a new page to our WordPress website, we just need to first head back to the dashboard. To get back to the dashboard from our website, we just need to click our site title again at the top. Now from the dashboard on the left hand side, if we just click where it says pages, we'll see a list of any of the pages we've added to our website. At this moment, we'll just have a sample page, which we can either edit or trash. For now though, let's just hit add new up at the top and we can add a new page to our website. Now we just want to give our page a title by typing it into this top box, so I'm just going to call this my new page. Then in the box underneath, this is where we can add any text or images we want on our new page. I'm just going to paste in some text that I've already copied, but you can just type your text into this box. To get some extra options, you can just click this icon on the far right, and that's going to open up a second menu underneath. We can make our text bold and italic, and we can also add titles as well. So if I just write title 1, we can highlight this text and using this drop down we can change it to be different heading sizes. Once we've added any text to our page, we can just add an image by taking a new line and then clicking add media up at the top. Now we just want to click select files in the middle and now we can search for any images we have on our computer. I'm going to use this image for an example and once you find it, just click on it and click open. It's then going to be loaded onto WordPress. Once the image has been loaded, on the right hand side, if we scroll down, here we can change the size of our image. So I want this to be full size. And then click insert into page and you'll now see it in the main content area. Once we're happy with the content on our page, we can either save it as a draft if we don't want it to go live at the minute, or we can just click publish which will make the page live on our website. So I'm just going to click publish and once the page has been published we'll see here at the top we can click view page. As you can see here's the title, the bold italic text, then our heading and our image. Now that we've added our new page if we just scroll up to the top and click our site title here this is going to bring us to the home page of our website. As you can see our page is nowhere to be found and instead you'll see this hello world blog post. This is because WordPress was originally set up to be a blog but we're wanting to use it as a website. So instead of having our blog show on the front page we can change it to be our new page instead. And to do that we just need to click up at the top where it says customize. Then here we're going to see a live preview of our site on the right hand side and there's going to be a few different options here on the left. To set our home page we just need to click this bottom option here that says static front page. Then we want to change this to a static page and under where it says front page we can select the new page we just created. When we do that we'll see it automatically changes and we'll see our new page is now the home page. Once we're happy with everything here, we can just click Save and Publish at the top and then click the X in the top left to go back to our site. So now that we know how to add a page and we know how to set our home page, 
let's go and change our theme. So to change our WordPress theme, we just need to click our site title again at the top to go back to the dashboard. And then on the left hand side, hover over where it says appearance and click themes. This is going to show us any of the themes we have already installed and WordPress normally comes with a few installed by default. To change to one of these themes, we just need to hover our mouse over it and click activate. Or alternatively, we can just add a new theme by clicking up at the top where it says wordpress.org themes. Here we're going to see a bunch of different free themes that we can install on our website and we can search between featured, popular and latest themes. Or if you know the name of the theme you're wanting to install, we can just type it into this search bar in the top right. So say for this example, we want to install a theme called So Simple, which is a great WordPress theme. We just need to type it into the search bar and it's going to appear. Then to install the theme, we just need to hover our mouse over it and click Install. Once the theme's been installed, we can click Activate, and that's now going to be the theme for our new website. If we click up at the top where it says Visit Site, we'll see that changing our theme has changed the entire look of our website. So that's how to get started with WordPress. For more tutorials of mine which will show you how to customize your site even further, just check the video description below. And if you want the written version of these steps, just go to letsbuildwp.com forward slash written steps. So that's letsbuildwp.com forward slash written steps. Here you can download my free WordPress ebook which will cover everything we did here along with a ton of other stuff. So that's us now at the end of this video and I hope you find it useful. If you did, please give it a like here on YouTube and feel free to subscribe for more awesome WordPress tutorials in future. Once again, my name's Marty from letsbuildwp.com and thank you very much for watching my video.